Tonight on Game All Night, Stephen Bonacore of Stronghold Games. This week and each week is brought to you by Game Toppers. Upgrade your gaming experience. Welcome to Game All Night. Hello and welcome to season two of Game All Night. And, you know, this year we had to start off with someone special. We got him sitting in the green room, Mr. Stephen Bonacore, the pod father, slowly <laughs> becoming the vid father. But, Dan, how was your holiday? Oh, splendid. Yes? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, did you get lots of beer under the tree? That is always the highlight of any holiday season, is, uh, is both consuming and acquiring. Excellent, so, uh, excellent. So, so beer was had a plenty. Well, you know, we most certainly approve. So speaking of said beer, because I want to get right into this, because, you know, I mean, we can sit here and talk about, you know, the last couple weeks and everything we did and, you know, but I let, let's face it, it's the beer that's important and we got a very important beer meister sitting in the wings, so... What have we got poured for us today? Yeah, Mr. Let's, let's talk about what we're drinking. So um, I am, am working locally. It's actually a New England IPA kind of night for, for us. Oh, absolutely. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> somewhere off in the wings, See, they're, they're cheering was heard. Um, so uh, I'm doing some local representation in the style, though. So, so I'm working with Funk Brewing out of Emmaus, Pennsylvania, which is uh, you know, just, just in, the, in the neighborhood of Allentown. Okay. Um, previously known to me as the uh, home of the, the Sweet Descent Beer Heaven, uh, Shangy's uh, Beer Distributor. But so, so yes. Funk Brewing up in Emmaus has, a, has their Silent Disco, which is a New England style IPA, um, coming in at about 6.8%. Uh, and it's it's everything you'd expect. Got that juiciness, got that citrus, a little bit of haze, and it's uh, it's delicious. I I don't even I I think I don't need you to tell me what I'm drinking, but <laughs> I'll let you do it. Well, well, yeah. Let me just talk a little bit about Fiddlehead Brewing and uh, and their second fiddle double IPA oh. because you've got the genuine article when it comes to <laughs> New England IPAs because uh, there was a recent trip to Vermont, I believe. That, oh yes. uh, that led to this being stocked in the uh, the whip pan fridge. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I try to make a trip up. If I can get some heady topper, I can. But you know what? Let, let's find out what the gentleman is drinking because he's no stranger to the Vermonts. Wow. How are you doing, Mr. Bonacore? <laughs> gentlemen, how are you? Outstanding. This is awesome to be here. Awesome. It really well, is. This is really great. And you guys really set this up in a big way because you like just touched all the major buttons <laughs> possible uh, in beer for me. So... <laughs> Uh, that was a really good one. I can't wait to get into beer discussions. I guess we'll talk about games, too, at some point here, but our uh, beer discussion know, is going to be kind of epic. Exactly. We don't have to. So so what is in your <laughs> glass today? Ah, so in my glass, which is um, showing a Dragon and Flagon logo on it. Love it. Um, I started with a Sierra Nevada. Okay. I don't know if you guys, you guys can see the Sierra Nevada. It's a single hop mosaic double okay. IPA. I love the mosaic. Just so, you start with, just so you start with that mosaic, an interesting hop. But then, actually, in this glass is actually the Sierra Nevada single hop Amarilla IPA. Kind of doing you'll a whole a theme there. <laughs> you'll notice a theme here. And if we get really crazy, we'll move into the Sierra Nevada single hop Citra IPL. Imperial, nice. Uh, yeah, the India, India Pale, Pale Lager. Lager. Right, right. right. And if things get wild here, <laughs> it would go Sierra Nevada El Dorado IPA. So single hop El Dorado. So so I'm um, uh, experiencing the uh, the differences in in the hops. And 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 as you guys obviously know, uh, especially with American brewing companies these days, the, the craft breweries, hops are what is making the big difference. They are they are going hop crazy in just. Right increasing bitterness and increasing hop flavor and hop aroma. But they're also doing these things like single hop brews where they'll just take one hop instead of doing blends and they'll highlight what that hop can do for a beer. And, uh, and I literally uh, got this set of four beers. It was a 12 pack, so four times three. 
And I already went through one of these, but when I heard you guys were going to do a beer <laughs> thing tonight, I said, oh, I got to get one of these ready again for tonight. So um, cheers to you all uh, and hops. Here, here, sir. Cheers so to hops. We, um, yeah, to hops. I will certainly drink to that. There now, you have, you, um, have you discovered any, um, any hops you like a little bit more than others in your, your recent tour of specific hops themselves? Yeah. Yeah, Mosaic is absolutely um, way at the top of the list. I think Mosaic gives a, a tremendous amount of uh, um, like like hop character, uh, spiciness. Right. Uh, um, it's it's not one of the ones you're going to find like in a lot of beers. Uh, just you know, using that one hop, you're going to find it in beers that want to have a complexity with lots of different things in it. But as a single hop, it it really imparts something that's kind of special to a beer. So that's sort of my favorite right now. Mm -hmm. You know, speaking about these, like, um, you know, these tour de hops that I'm, that I'm doing right here, um, Samuel Adams, Boston beer company did something, um, about two years ago. It right. was called latitude 48. Did you ever have that? Um, you know, I think that one missed me. So latitude 48, uh, was a beer, but by the way, what is, what is the, 48th latitude it is the hop belt so ah. it goes across the pacific northwest and it also goes like into europe right obviously so that's where the best greatest hops in the world are grown basically across that latitude it needs a certain amount of light a certain amount of water a certain amount of this and that hops are very dependent like like grapes on exactly the conditions um, that that you know are needed to yeah. grow so they did this thing called the latitude 48 beer and in it they had five different hops in it, but then what they did was, and of course they were all from that, from the Pacific Northwest, but then what they did, they did a Latitude 48 deconstructed. Cool. And then they created five beers that only had one hop in it, exactly the same malt bill, okay. which these don't. The ones I have here do not. Right. They're all, one's a double IPA, one's a regular, one's an IPO, one's a session IPA. They took the exact same malt bill and then they added just that one hop in the various ways so some it's the only way to truly fruit. taste the difference in the hops exactly right? let me tell oh. you it was one of the greatest experiences in beer that i ever had because wow. you were able to take those five hops and literally just say well what is that doing so one of those hops was um was zeus have you heard of zeus at all i have it's it's not used a lot because it's kind of pricey from what i hear and it's very weird. It's a really weird <laughs> hop. Um, it's not something you should do a single hop beer with. Um, <laughs> but they did it. And, you know, you could then get out of that what that hop will do to bitterness and flavoring and aroma. So it was brilliant. The whole, the whole thing. And I can't remember the five hops that were in it. I'm sure anybody who's into beer can go Google what they actually put in it. But that's a long story about, yeah, how crazy I am about beer. I do, do, do love my beer. Awesome. Now, do you have any that kind of you don't like? For me, it's kind of, I kind of feel Citra can be a little heavy handed and I don't necessarily like the lingering bitter that it brings, but you know, I tend to avoid it a little bit more, but do you have anything that kind of... Any specific hops or just beers yeah. in general? Uh, hops. No, I, mean, I don't, well, I don't, um, yeah, yeah no, I don't, um, I don't, dis I don't discriminate against any given hop, uh, you know, and I'm, and I'm, uh, such a, uh, someone who loves very, very different styles of beers, all kinds of different styles of beers. And I, so I, um, so if, so if a brewer is saying I'm going to make a Citra beer, like right away, like this IPL is a Citra, Citra beer. Um, I'm going to experience that, um, and enjoy it for what it is. So no, I, I, you can say, is there a style that you don't like? And that's yeah. actually easier to say only because there are certain styles that are just boring. And those are the like American, uh, American Pilsner, right? Or yeah. American Premium Lager, Budweiser, right? <laughs> I mean, like, does anybody sure. like Budweiser or or that style? Of course not. That's just it's just there to get people drunk. So, uh, but hops, no, don't discriminate. Uh, if the brewer is using it in an interesting way, I'm all in. Okay, interesting. Well, I mean, see, Dan. So Dan didn't know um, that you had you had like legit beer chops. So I kind of told him he oh, had to yeah. bring out the big guns tonight. 
Because if anybody could have shown up tonight with Hetty Topper, it's this guy. <laughs> yeah, and when you said and when you said Hetty Topper, I was like, you heard me. I was applauding, and then you told me about the uh, the Vermont trip, and then you mentioned second fiddle. Yeah, and uh, there's a there's a list here that I started. I don't think you want me to bring it out yet. You talk about the top five beers. We're gonna we'll get to that later. I think. I think we but, should. Um, no. Yeah, whenever you want to get into that, we'll get into that. But but Vermont, Vermont, the state of Vermont, I think, is the single greatest beer state in the country. It's this little little state. I won't use any other adjectives. It's this little state that has a tremendously high number of breweries in it. And I maybe that's all you can it might, not much you can do. Yeah, you in ski Vermont, and drink beer. Come on. You sing it, you ski, you drink beer. And, and you make cheese. They have, and you make cheese. They have some <laughs> of the most amazing breweries going on there. And Second Fiddle, um, uh, Second Fiddle Brewing Company is absolutely Fiddlehead. Fiddlehead Brewing Company, yep. Second Fiddle is their double IPA. Absolutely one of the great ones up there. And Hetty Topper, of course, and Lost in Sip of Sunshine. These are these are tremendous, tremendous beers and brewing companies from that great state. There, there might be some sip of sunshine that was sitting right next to the uh, <laughs> to ah. the fiddlehead. <laughs> the uh, you know, I, um, the um, just to make one one extra comment on the whole Vermont thing. Uh, for the for the two two years running, and it wasn't this year, and it wasn't the year before because I just came down to Florida. So when I was in New Jersey for the right. two previous winters, we uh, friends of mine, we all made a road trip like a weekend, extended weekend road trip up to Vermont just to hit all the big breweries there. And, of course, we would hit we would hit um, uh, Second uh, Fiddlehead, The Alchemist, uh, Lawson's You Can't Get Into. We'd, nope. um, we'd go to Foley Brothers. We'd go all the way up to uh, Hill Farmstead. We'll talk about that later. Uh, these, <laughs> these, these breweries are absolutely astonishing, and their, and their um, uh, tasting rooms are great. So if anybody can ever make a trip and do the – do the the brew tours of the breweries in Vermont. They'll be in for a big treat. Just make sure you hit Long Trail when you're hungry, because getting <laughs> they got good food. Getting some teriyaki <laughs> wings at Long Trail is long long been established as one of my favorite things to do when I get up there. Absolutely. There you go. And they're not slacking either. They've got they kind of went they went crazy. Like they started out kind of being the Budweiser of Vermont, and now all of a sudden they're blowing up. You know, with a yeah. lot of their IPAs and things. Yeah, I wouldn't put them in the top tier of the yeah. uh, of the breweries in Vermont, but yeah, they've certainly come a long way, and they've got a bunch of things that they've done in in recent history. And if you go to their actual brewery into their tasting room, they've got stuff that you can't get. Like that was easy to get Long Trail in New Jersey. Sure. Um, uh, so it was so it wasn't like special to be there. But once I got there, all of a sudden it was like wow. Oh, so they got all these other things that you can't get outside of this area. So uh, so it was pretty cool. Yeah, they do a lot of little like local bottles and things like that. That's, you know, a lot of that right. stuff. And I also like 14th Star, but you really got to go north to get to 14th Star. because yeah, I don't know that one. That's a cool one. That's up in uh, Burlington. They do one called uh, Tribute, which would be in my top 10. Um, that's pretty, pretty darn delicious. It's, uh, it's nice. Big, well, it's big, it's juicy, you know, it's, it's starting to come down. You can get it in New York at places. So it's nice. Oh, to, awesome. Yeah. But no, second fiddle is, you know, uh, here's a little look. Long time viewers of the show know that it's my all time favorite and I, I love it. Hetty's number three, Lawson's number two. This is my number one, but I want to know about yours later, but we're going to tease that one because it's not yeah, about yeah. me. It's about you. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so Mr. Bonacord, he, he is a beer aficionado who also owns a, a little known publisher who publishes some, some amazing uh, games, I would say, because, uh, you know, what, what's interesting, though, about the stuff you do is you kind of run the gamut. Right. Like, you know, mm -hmm. you've got some lighter stuff with, you know, the fabled yep. and stuff like that. But then, you, you know, so so I actually like did a quick rundown because like some publishers uh -oh. are easy. All right. But, you know, I'm 18XX are sitting here and, you know, I like my heavy stuff. But, you know, Great Western Trail, my favorite game of last year, period. Hands down. Flam Rouge. Amazing. Terraforming I Mars. Love Love Flamme Rouge. Of course, I love Terraforming. I can't tell you how much, uh, oh. how well that's done, obviously, for the company. 
Yeah, I mean, like, you know, go back in time and, you know, buy some stock in terraforming Mars, Cali Mala, <laughs> Pursuit of Happiness. I mean, you you just kind of, I, I love that, you know, it, it started with a family game of Survive and it's That's come right. all the way up to your biggest hit being one of the, well, it was probably the biggest hit last year. It's just one of these deep, rich games and it just keeps on giving. Um, so. Yeah, <laughs> uh, terraforming has has transformed uh, the company in in many ways. It's uh, obviously um, took us to a whole nother level. It made us very interesting to uh, to merge with indie boards right. and cards, as you probably uh, probably know that happened. And uh, it is a game that is basically infinitely expandable because, of course, the card play. Uh, makes it that way, but not only just the cards, but then the way that the game is structured and we can continue adding uh, various mechanics into it um, as side mechanics. So we had Venus next, you know, with a sideboard there, and now we just did colonies and now you can right. go out to the outer colonies and things like that. So Terraforming Mars, an amazing game. Uh, we, we, you know, we love the Fricks brothers who did that game out in, uh, out in Sweden with us and we're just excited to continue to do that great game uh forever and we've got many more interesting things in that line coming up some <laughs> I can things that imagine. i leaked out i leaked out recently and i got in a lot of trouble for so there'll be no more leaking of news before i'm allowed <laughs> to talk about it <laughs> you have bosses now you have to worry about these things <laughs> uh, or, or partners yeah i saw the bosses but partners who like want to be able to control when certain things should be announced so Sure. Well, I mean, it's tough because, you know, you're excited and these things are not fast. Yep. They they take time to come out and they take time to develop and build. And, yep. you know, you you just want to get it out there. I get that. And it, it makes total sense. Absolutely. And I'm not going to make you do anything silly like that. That's not what we're about. I'm not I'm not going to dig for that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, the you know, it's just I, I am curious as to what it really kind of what the process was, because, you know, we had Daryl Andrews on and, and it was interesting talking to him about what Sagrada did for him, you know, and how it kind of brought him out of, you know, doing things like the Back to the Future game and all these like quick one offs. And then all of a sudden have something that's widely accepted and big like that. I mean, that I mean. Now, Terraforming sure. Mars is much larger than Sagrada. So, Sagrada is a great game. Right. But you alluded it to it yourself when you said it, it transformed the company. Now, way back when, you know, and, and the story is found many places on the interwebs if you want to find it. Stevens crawl, trudged through Wall Street, working IT, many years, doing a, a one-man band, and then finally says, you know what? I'm going to pack up the van. We're going to move to Florida. We're going to we're we're going to sell the stronghold itself and we're going to we're going to we're going to strike out anew amongst palmetto bugs and screened in pools. And that's <laughs> that is now the life. So so how did this all come about due to Terraform Mars? How did that like finally flip that switch because you you held out a long time being the one man show? And, you know, famously so. So I did. How did so, that work? Yeah. So it it really the, the funny thing is it wasn't terraforming Mars that um, that flipped the switch. It was okay. not. Um, it just so happened to propel it to the level where it made things easy. You know, once you had that uh, right. the switch. So the 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 the, the, the back story to get to the final story was that when I started Stronghold and uh uh, it started in uh, 2008, uh, at the end of 2008, and it was over conversations in mm -hmm. Atlantic City, New Jersey, you know, over drinking and gambling, where <laughs> all the best decisions, of course, are made. Oh, of absolutely. Of course, that's where, that's where best decisions are absolutely made. And um, with a partner at the time, we decided to start Stronghold Games. At any, no point did I think that the, that the company, uh, even though I knew that, you know, I was bringing to the table a business sense, uh, business smarts sure. that I never thought it was going to be what it is now. I thought that I would have a a way of at some point in the future 
retiring, but like as in like a retirement age. And then you use this as like a little bit of a retirement job and you can keep going, you know, in your 60s in retirement right. and keep working and making a little extra money. After um, about six or so years, it became impossible to stay in IT, IT on Wall Street, mm -hmm. to stay there and to run the company, impossible. So in 2016, I began the escape plan. So right. um, <laughs> you know, I, needed, you know, I needed to figure out how I was gonna escape Wall Street first to escape escape corporate living and then go from that once i did so it was it was a it was a it was a tiered thing get out of get out of corporate life a sell house in new jersey get it ready b then move to move to a, a nicer place a nicer climate and i love new jersey and i love my friends and i love my family sure but i'd rather be living today it's right now if it's okay for me to say we're recording this on january 3rd 2009 I don't know what temperature it is back where you are, but it's 80 degrees here, and I was in my pool today. I was in my pool before <laughs> today. So, so now you can see the kind of lifestyle that one can have if you're living in South Florida versus living in New Jersey. So that was a great thing. So that was the plan to get here. In 2016 was when I began to execute the plan. It just so happened, 2016, Terraforming Mars also hit. It came out. Um, toward the in the in the third quarter of 2016, okay. and started out big, became huge, and now is earth-shatteringly huge. So it's just gone bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, so that wasn't part of the plan, literally, of getting out and moving to Florida. It just was all of a sudden became a well. Obviously, this thing is going to work and do that. And then from there, the company, of course, though we had been talking to some people intermittently anyway. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, Travis Worthington, a very good friend of mine at Indie Boys and Cards in the industry, said, you know, we've been teasing each other about who I'm going to buy you. No, you're going to buy me. That kind of thing for years. <laughs> Why don't we get serious about this? And we actually talked about it and we decided that it was a marriage made in heaven with his lighter games and my, some of my partnerships that I have to merge the companies together. And that's where we are now, the merged company of Indie Game Studios. Absolutely. And it's 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 an amazing story, and I, I love to hear it because if, you know, you've been very open and prolific about being on shows and being around and telling people, and it was just kind of, I, I wasn't sure the timing of it, but it's it was definitely the oxygen in the fire that kind of helped propel, oh, yeah. <laughs> propel the flight. But I do picture Absolutely. In, in the new Escape from, you know, Wall Street movie, you know, is it going to be Charlie <laughs> Sheen? Or is it is it really going to be like, you know, another Kurt Russell? Like, I don't know where that's going to go. Like, who's going to play Snake in that version? <laughs> you think I can get Robert Downey Jr.? I really like that guy. You think I can yeah. get him to play me? I don't know. Well, maybe. We'll see, maybe. Uh, I, I heard he's looking for work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, he's retiring from Iron Man now, right? He has to get out. Since he he is, to wrap he it is. up, right? Speaking oh, of wrap it up, let's take a quick break and uh, check out... The, the vocal stylings of Mr. Patrick Hillier. Happy this. Pontifications with Patrick Hillier. A thief attempted to steal paintings from the Louvre in Paris, but was caught two blocks away when his van ran out of gas. All the thief could say for himself was, I had no Monet to buy Degas to make the Van Gogh. But I tried for it anyway, because I had nothing to lose. Hello. Welcome back to Game All Night. Ah, the pouring edition. Anyway, welcome back. <laughs> I'm here with Mr. Bonacore. He is still here. We are still drinking. We're trying to get him to beer number three, folks. So if you are at home <laughs> playing the telethon, please phone in now so that we can get him <laughs> <laughs> to drink another beer for us That's as great. well. And so great. absolutely, you know, operators are standing by potential. Uh, <laughs> so are they going <laughs> to are they going to like donate to you or donate to Stronghold Games and buy games? One or the other. Well, both are good. I'm, both results work for us, right? I'm happy right, either yeah. way. So check us out right. at, you know, patreon.com. No, um, so anyway, the 
we're going to try out a little new segment because, you know, I kind of had some requests and some thoughts and uh, I think you're the perfect candidate to try this out on. So we're going to do oh, no. some. Really? We're right. going to do some photo stalking. What's going on here? <laughs> this is um, so so this is called being Bonacord. That and and I did not create this this uh, moniker, uh, but yes, that is Rich Summer. I am bonacoring Rich Summer. Um, at a, uh, at a convention about four years ago, a very good friend of mine, Stephanie Straw. Do you know Stephanie? She is awesome. I do. Yeah, she she is such a sweetheart. Um, uh, I I saw her there and I gave her a big hug and a kiss. And she took a selfie of, of me kissing her. And she said, "My con- there's a BGG con. She said, my convention has officially begun. I've been Bonacord. <laughs> and ever since then, I have been kind of using this thing. as like, you know, uh, if, if you permit it, not without your consent, Please. if you permit it to be kissed, then I will, I will kiss you on the cheek. And in fact, <laughs> my girlfriend created a, <laughs> uh, a lip balm. I mean, she went out on the internet and she found a lip balm that you can personalize and put your company stuff on it. And the one we, we created has the Stronghold logo <laughs> on it and it says, get Bonacord. It's amazing <laughs> nice. on lip balm. So, so at any given convention, I might have some of that. And if I Bonacord you, you may have some lip balm. There you go. So I Every think- summer's a great friend. Right. And you started off great. I mean, this was did he taste like Dairy Queen, though? That's what I got to know. Did he, t- <laughs> did he taste way, like, you know, <laughs> this is way before his Dairy Queen, his Dairy Queen time. Rich is a great guy, a true gamer, by the way. I, I, oh. I don't know how much how well, you know, but he's a real hardcore gamer and an amazing actor. I've seen him do a I've seen him. um uh, on Broadway, he was on Broadway and all I could off Broadway play. Uh, he was phenomenal there. Uh, and that was in um, uh, in Harvey, Harvey, really uh, the the great the giant Jimmy Stewart. Love it. Yeah, yeah. He was he played the the uh, the in um, the medical intern guy, um, and I got to meet um, all the all the people that were in the play with him. It was it was really cool. Uh, and I recently saw him in a uh, in a movie, and I wish I remembered it. And I'm now I'm on the spot, so I don't remember the names of the of course not the movie he was in. Well, the beautiful uh, but, thing with post-production is I'll just pop it up somewhere. Uh, and Rich is a great guy. And there's actually a much, much more um, <laughs> um, uh, sketchy photo of he and I where, well, I can't even talk about it. He, it was, <laughs> there was, there was more kissing involved that somebody took a picture of that one. So I'm not even going to talk about that one. I tried to find it on the phone for you, but I couldn't find it. Well, you know, we all know how it is to find pictures. Now, whether you conveniently did not find it or you did not find it, <laughs> you know, the interwebs will will just never know. So, all that's right. It. So, excellent. So, that's Mr. Summer. Dan, what's our what's what's next here? Well, so wait a second. <laughs> it's more <laughs> more <laughs> not occurring in the opposite direction. There a might be a theme here. Good established. Old, <laughs> <laughs> but good but, old Tom Vassell. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Did you get a little tickle on that one at least? <laughs> With his beard there. So yeah, Tom yeah. and I, uh, we have this uh, frenemy relationship, yeah. right? You know, we're uh, we are uh, uh, alpha male rivals, and we're always constantly <laughs> jousting with each other verbally and in videos in every place. And uh, we really do love each other. So Tom decided to kiss me on the cheek to but do I, one I, of. Uh, I think the expression is appropriate. You know. Yes, absolutely is. <laughs> and, you know, you can't say no when somebody like six foot six comes and does that. And you kind of, you're, ah. <laughs> I, had, right. I had to give him a face, though. <laughs> absolutely. All right. So next we have, well, there you go. See, you know, you, you, oh, you do there make it the is. rounds. There's the, there's the I, uh, I get Bonacord lip balm. And this is Rodney Smith. Very, of very course. good friend of mine. Uh, everyone knows Rodney now he's with Board Game Geek. As you can see, he's, um, he's wearing the Board Game Geek um, uh, jersey there. Uh, and uh, his videos are absolutely some of the greatest um, that, that are produced on the internet for gaming. So uh, love you, Rodney. Rodney and I recently went on a, a vacation together. We went uh, down to Cabo. You went he's to such Mexico. such a fun guy to be spent on. Yeah, nice. man. Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. Um, I, my, my bro, I, I get some time there. My brother's got a place uh, okay, when he's nice, nice to me, he gives, nice. me, gives me some time there. And I invited Jeff Engelstein, uh, and, and his wife, Susan and oh, Rodney nice. and his wife, Chris, Christy to go with us. This one. 
So. Oh my God! We're gonna do only kissing <laughs> pictures. That's it. Only getting Bonacore pictures. Let's just say, so. let's say the well is deep in this one. You know, it's, I it's had to put in the lip balm, and then of course, you know, but but this one kind of like when I was scrolling through, this one kind of got me. I'm like, I I need a little more explanation as to what exactly is going on here. All right, so this is this is actually has is a great story behind this one, a really amazing one. So so um. Uh, when I started getting to know Eric Lang, that's Eric Lang, by the way, a uh, great, great designer. We became uh, friends really, really quickly once I got to know him. And he decided to bet me on, mm-hmm. uh, there, was a, there was this huge ice storm in Dallas, Texas at BGG Con about four years ago it was. And he decided to bet me if I was going to be able to get out on – on my flight back to New Jersey at the time right. uh, that evening, 80%, 80% of the flights had been canceled on this, on, on this Sunday of BGG con. He said, I'll see you in the bar later. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm out. I'm leaving tonight. I'm, I'm going. He goes, no, no, you'll be at the bar. I'm like, Every, everything's canceled. I'm like, no, no, look, look, United's got it. My app tells me I'm leaving. He says, now nah, I'll see you in a bar. And then we decided to make a bet. If I got out, or if I didn't, <laughs> one of us was going to wear bunny ears, and the bunny ears is what you're seeing there. So at the next year's BGG closing ceremonies, he had to wear bunny ears. And in fact, for three years running, he continued to lose bets to me, and he continued <laughs> to wear bunny ears each year. With a different bet each year. Once it was a game, it was the bunny, it was the, the flight, it was the it was a game, and then it was who's more famous. That was my favorite win Ooh. of all. Who's more famous, Stephen Bonacore or Eric Lang? And we had this way of walking around Dice Tower Convention one year. <laughs> the most – whoever got engaged more times by, like, random people would win. And I beat him five to four. I beat him by one engagement, wow. and it was, like, perfect. So, Eric Lang, I love you, but you are the biggest <laughs> loser. <laughs> That's awesome. I can't wait to find out what number four is because, you know, oh, they, we haven't done the next one yet. We'll, no? we'll do it again. All right. Absolutely. So then, of course, that brings us to to Marty doing the fake one. Uh, this was at PAX well, Unplugged. Last, last year first, now. <laughs> right. Uh, two years ago now. Yeah. Right. So now this was at PAX Unplugged 2017. Right. Um, that was the first year of PAX Unplugged. And they ran PAX Unplugged at the same weekend as BGG Con. Yep. So we split squad. So I went to BGG Con. My core demographic I know is there. They want to see me. It was it was we good did. to we be did. there. We were there and we did that. So I sent um, Cynthia Tuck uh, and uh, she ran the booth over at PAX Unplugged. And she decided, I didn't come up with this idea. <laughs> she decided, why don't we take a picture of you and create a cardboard stand up and put it in the booth? And I'm like, Wow. Okay. That sounds really <laughs> egotistical, but it's marketing genius. Let's do it. So it fits Marty, with the brand. And- we'll leave it with that. <laughs> there you go. So Marty and Tom Vassell and Matt Fantastic, everybody was taking pictures with the cardboard cutout of Stephen Bonacore, who now has his own Facebook page that I did not create. It's called <laughs> Stephen Bonacardboard. Cardboard. So you can go and become a fan of Stephen Bonacardboard. Cardboard. He's, I heard he's a, a little stiff, but he's a nicer yeah. guy than me. He is. He is. But he's, he's easy to talk to. You know, we'll, there you we'll go. definitely say that. A good right. listener. <laughs> so, so now we have to move on because the, uh, the not – Stephen likes to get kissed a lot. Sure. That, that's fun. And he likes to do some kissing too. But there's another thing I found out that you like to do. This is – well, uh, first of all, I was a, um, I was a cosplayer. Um, okay. not like a, not like professional, like some people sure, like sure. really like that's all they do. But like, I would go, um, every year to a, a convention in, uh, in Maryland when I was in New Jersey, it was called shore leave. And uh, we used to do skits on stage, uh, to win best costume, best skit, best this, best that. And it was just a lot of fun. And we won a lot of awards and it was great. So I love cosplay. I love role playing. We'll start with that. I love role playing. I'm an erstwhile actor. Just even took some acting lessons. I'm a ham in general. Duh. That's obvious. So I love that. So the picture you're showing here, however, is of a murder mystery. It's a Game of Thrones themed murder mystery uh, night. And I was playing Jon Snow. 
and uh, that's Paula Milano, my girlfriend, and she was playing the the Scarlet. The, 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 the red the red witch the there red witch right i mean the, the the woman there that uh very weird things have happened with her in the storyline uh we won't go into it too much if you haven't seen <laughs> seen the show some weird things but, uh, but and there this, and it was about eight of us playing the different characters and we had a great time and somebody created an entire murder mystery you know and who create who you know who actually done it and who killed I forgot exactly who who was the person that was dead, but who killed him. And it was a really, really fun night. So that was what that particular picture was about. Awesome. But of course, we can't stop there because. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm at a loss, Stephen. Like, you know, we're, we're going through like I get it. I get all these things. But this one, I'm yep. like, what? This is this is not <laughs> cosplay. This is at. The 70th birthday party for my girlfriend's mother. Okay. And she just bought all kinds of silly hats. Okay. And bow ties and masks. And let's not left them on the table. And then people took pictures with them or without them. So I happened to find a very cool, you know, $5 gold hat and a $2 gold tie and I put them both together because they, you know, I got a sense of style. So I put them together. So there's not the story behind this is that it was simply left on the table and people put them on and took pictures with them. So I just I, can't give I you love this a good story. I, I kind of no, but I, I feel like this needs to be a character and maybe it's a flip the table game. But I, I feel that there's I feel there's spark here. You know, like I, I I'm I think there's ah, something else. Well, Chris, I have I, I have a sense of style, you so do. I can I can I can use my dark but dark you, shirt there. You got with the, my the bow tie, my with gold, the gold, gold tie. Yep, it works. It works. But <laughs> it then all worked out. But then there's this. You're looking rather angry, uh, right? Right. This was at okay. This is a little cosplay, I guess you could say. <laughs> so this is Stronghold Games timing. Um, during we every year at Gen Con, we run a special event. Uh, and we run it for the game that we're launching there. So this was uh, not this year, but the year before we did a, um, um, uh, no, no, this was this year. I apologize. This was this year's event where we did uh, the Fist of Dragonstones, the Tavern Edition. Okay. And this is one of the characters that are in that, and it's the swashbuckler character. And I put on the, the interesting swashbuckler stuff. And uh, yeah, we when, had people there doing the various is, characters. He's got the boots too. You don't see that, but. I did, I did, I did. I did try to put the whole there. thing together. Wasn't one of my best costumes, but I tried to put the whole thing together for you. It was It was more like kind of the, the look, like you're like, you taking a picture of me, me, <laughs> me, tough guy. It's kind of like, you know, the Bronx meets pirate and no, i was kind of i was kind of feeling that. Eh, all right there you go we'll, we'll go with that <laughs> but then you got you got now this is another murder mystery uh night uh same that's paula milano again same house that we did the game of thrones uh you murder have some mystery. fun friends i'm just saying i have i got good I, all, all of my friends basically <laughs> all of my friends back from new jersey at least they're all gamers not as many here but we're working on them. Okay. Uh, and this, we did a, um, uh, a 1920s, like, like Roaring Twenties theme murder mystery. I like uh, and I was, yeah. And again, someone created the entire script um, for the thing. And uh, I happened to be the, um, I was a press. I, I don't, you can't see it in the picture I had in, in that hat. Right. There's a little thing that says press in it. And, and Paula was doing a, um, what do they call that? The women Flapper? in the... Um, Flapper, flapper dress, the big flapper right. dress. And all the women basically had that kind of cool same style dress. I love on. that. That and art the guys deco. Were doing the various. Yeah, awesome. exactly. And you can pull it was off really a lot hat. of fun. You totally Thank pull you. off that hat. I can't pull off a hat to save my life, but that's. <laughs> no, I think you absolutely could. I can see you got that that kind of look. I think you could then do you it. just knock, a, knock it off on every doorway I walk through. You know, <laughs> Gil's got his pork pie. There's that. But then, of course. <laughs> Now it. we're going deep. <laughs> I think we had to go back a little for this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're going deep into the back alley. So this is during the uh, the cos the true cosplay days, um, and we did a 
we did a big um, cosplay, uh, X-Men versus Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Okay. Uh, I got to play Wolverine, as you can see, or uh, I did both Logan and I did the full spandex yellow Wolverine at night. So the, the oh. full thing. And uh, I was in really darn good shape <laughs> then. I actually worked out for like six months as hard as I could, uh, lost weight, put on a lot of muscle mass. I'm actually, I just recently lost like 25 pounds. So I'm actually lighter right now than I was then, but I had at least 10 or more pounds of muscle mass on me then than I do right now. So yeah, this was great. And that's me with uh, a woman that was playing uh, uh, Phoenix and uh, Jean Grey or Phoenix. And she also had another costume for her evening. She did dark Phoenix at night, a similar one with all red. So yeah, we really took our cosplay seriously, but you know, just for like the one event per year that we were doing it at. Nice, nice. I, I, I appreciate the the six months of dedication that went into that. I did. But, I really did, man. You know, I I think don't when you when you buy an A shirt, don't you have to like register on some website now, like with the government? <laughs> Because there tends to be some domestic issue that may come up in your life at a later time, but I don't. Yeah, who knows? You know, I don't. Know. <laughs> well done, well done. I think I Thank think you. we're wrapping it up. So oh, so you didn't you didn't show the yellow spandex version? No, no. Okay, I, good. I wasn't going right. to do that okay. to you. That, that's oh, it's cool. okay. It's okay. I look good. I look good. You do, but then you look casual, <laughs> and I know that this is kind of another thing that that's kind of big with you, and that's kind of. Doing this, uh, the Crokinole tournament, but I, I got, I got caught up on the board. Like I, I, I love it. Um, I, I'm a, I'm a fan of Crokinole and uh, I wanted to get a nice board. So I, uh, I commissioned the Holinsky brothers. They, they Whoa. do some of the greatest Crokinole boards and, and they and they'll paint oh, yeah. whatever you want. Yeah. You know about them, right? Okay, oh, good. Yes. It's gorgeous. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, so that's the that's the old logo. This is the obviously the new logo. If you're, if you oh, you're gonna need it, another uh, board. <laughs> nah, <laughs> I still have that board. I'm not gonna get a new board. Uh, but that's the you know uh, my my current crocodile board, and I love it. Uh, and uh, I'm not I'm very bad at it. So two years in a row, I've had a I've had a um, uh, a, a bet with Ignasi Chevichek of Portal Games. We do that. We do our own podcast together, Board Games Insider. And um, at board at um, Dice Tower Con each year, we do a crokinole challenge, a two-player crokinole challenge. I beat him the first year, uh, <laughs> and I was amazed that I beat him because he plays every day. He says in his office, oh, okay. uh, and he, cr- but he crushed me this past year. So uh, I, I, if I play again with him, I'm sure I'm going to lose the, uh, <laughs> the the two out of three. I got really <laughs> lucky, I guess, the first year. So yeah, I'm a big fan of crokinole. Great game. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you playing along, Stephen. This has been a little, a little fun doing some photo stalking of, of Mr. Bonacore himself. When friends stare at you and even glare at you, tapping toes, wrapping fingers, when you ask whose turn it is and hear the dreaded, it's been yours for two minutes, Anxiety and fear can paralyze you in that moment. If you've struggled with analysis paralysis before, if you've tried other medications and nothing seems to help, now there's Analpar, a new analysis paralysis alternative. Independent studies have shown that Analpar's unique properties stimulate the brain's neurotransmitters more gently than other medications. Several study participants report relief of analysis paralysis symptoms within as little as two weeks. You deserve to feel the warmth, to feel present in the moment, to be free, to be yourself again. You deserve an analysis paralysis alternative when nothing else has worked. You deserve Analpar. Though users of this medication experience less side effects than with other common medications, side effects may still include dry mouth, sudden outbursts of puns, lack of future planning, itchiness, temporary confusion, considerably more losses, temporary euphoria, and death. What'd you think? Was that fun? Was that enjoyable? I, I had a good time. I loved it. <laughs> I loved it, dude. In fact, is I loved it so much. We'll go to the third beer. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like it. It's a it's a three beer kind of night. 
So I never, I never do three beers on a week on a week day. Well, you so know, you, you kind, you know, the boss now, so it's a little, you know, it's it's Florida. Isn't there a time zone? There's got to be something, right? It's something like that. <laughs> You know what it is? See, you, you're, you're not doing the full 16-ounce beer, so you need three just to keep up with two. That's Oh, I know. And, the math and, works, uh, right? Absolutely. <laughs> a, it does. And B, you're, you're having the, um, the second fiddle, right? I am. I that am. Clock, that clock's in about uh, 9%, right, give or take? Yeah, it's, it's a big – there's a reason yeah. why I don't do this show at, at an off-site studio. That's for darn sure. So <laughs> There you go. Absolutely. So you and Ignacy, though, you know, you mentioned him in the in the last bit there, but you guys have kind of really formed the, this bond. And those of you who don't listen to Board Game Insider, it's if you're thinking it's an industry show, you're you're wrong. It, it's a, a very interesting show. You guys talk about a lot of different things, and I find it a lot of fun. Um, and you guys just have this great rapport, and I love it. And I, I also love that he doesn't take any crap from you. Like, <laughs> you guys... Does anybody? <laughs> no. Well, they're, they're, I'm sure there's some, but you guys definitely yeah. have a great banter on the show. I love that you do it, and, you know, how, how do you find time to even get a show out, being how busy you are? Yeah, so that's, uh, that's actually a really good question. So... Um, we constantly have problems doing that. First, I mean, it starts with the uh, the fact that we're six hours apart, right? I mean, we are. Um, oh uh, yeah. I mean, it's Eastern time zone challenge. as you are. At Eastern time zone as you are, and he's in Central European time, six hours apart. Sometimes seven, sometimes five, depending on the exact day, uh, the week of the year, um, and that's the biggest that's the number one challenge and then we go to the fact that we're constantly on the road sometimes we're not we're on the road like at the same time for the big cons but we're also sometimes i'm on the road and he's not or he's on the road and i'm not <laughs> so we can't record you guys are the two busiest doing, guys in the business how is it even it, possible <laughs> it's 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 not easy we 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 and, and the funniest thing of all is that uh earlier le, at some point in the middle of last year, uh, middle end of last year, he said to me, "Let let's let's now we want to do every week." Is that a bad Polish accent? But he wants uh. to he wants to record with me every week, and I'm like, "Good lord, Ignacy, we we could barely get every two weeks. You want to do every week?" He goes, "Yes, we're going to do it every week." So now I'm trying every week to try to schedule time with him, and it never ever ever works out. So we sometimes release weekly, most often bi-weekly but occasionally even we miss you know and we go three or or more weeks but but for the most part we're doing really good we're in our 92nd we just recorded our 92nd wow. episode That's which impressive. is pretty darn good i think yeah. yeah and and by the way let's 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 talk about this for a moment when i when i mentioned to tom vassal that we were going to start this podcast <laughs> and i think it would be a great idea listen i said hey we're going to talk about the industry we're going to un unveil you know what's going on in the industry take questions from the audience. It's going to be a really good thing. He goes, you'll never last 10 episodes. That was his thing. He said, you'll never go 10 episodes. And I'm like, no, 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 really, we're going to be serious. And he said, no, you won't. He said, but if you get 10 episodes, I'll put you in the Dice Tower Network. And we obviously did 10 episodes. We got on the Dice Tower Network. And, and, and really, the reason we do it, obviously, there's a promotional uh, benefit to doing it. Sure. We're talking about the companies, what's going on. But we really want to unravel the industry. We really want to um, show how companies are run and the decisions we have to make. And we do that mostly, not only we, we talk about the news of the industry, but we also like take questions directly from our, our viewership because we have a guild on Board Game Geek and we grab the questions that they're asking and we address them uh, on the show. So uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of a give back for, for us, uh, but of course it's couched in the fact that we want to talk about the companies and how wonderful some of the things are but we we leave the promotional stuff to a small extent and leave the the game industry stuff to a larger extent so we're really happy awesome. about doing it we love each other so it's good and we're very different people by the way ignasi beer never he drinks tea and cookies bonacore drinks beer and pretzels <laughs> i mean yeah well you know, we didn't even get into the whole German beer, USA beer, and, you know, you spent a lot of time, like, 
There's a whole nother show waiting in the wings, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we'll gonna, do that next time. We're gonna we're gonna have to because I think that there's a lot going on. So so what we're gonna do, Stephen, is there anything like really awesome, cool? Do you have anything like right around the corner that, that you're kind of jamming to talk about? Is there anything awesome in the wings? I mean I mean, do you want me just I, listen, you like, know I, I can look, talk it could be like a whole nother hour. show. Absolutely. I know. But I know when you're going to be dropping this, I think you said around the 10th. So I'll just talk about a couple of things that are coming up soon. How's that sound? That sounds you know? great. Does that sound a good idea? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So on January 23rd, uh, which is the, like the next street date uh, for most of the industry, because nobody releases things at the end of December and nobody releases things at the beginning of January. Mm -hmm. Everyone's too busy with things. But January 23rd, we have a, we have a couple of releases coming out. Uh, one really major one, and that's Forum Trajanum. By Stefan Feld. Some uh, people Stefan might know Feld, him. Eh, you might know this guy. <laughs> he might um, be. He is maybe a great designer, perhaps. Yeah, <laughs> truly one of the great designers of the industry. Um, he's got hit after hit after hit. Castles of Burgundy. Trajan is another big one. So in the same vein as Trajan, the same theme. He, we we did Forum Trajanum with him, and you are now um, in the service of Trajan. Uh, and Emperor Trajan, and you are building a colonia outside of Rome, as right. well as giving tribute and building his new monument to his greatness. Of course, the of Roman course. emperors are all about that. The Forum Trajan, he wants to build it. So you have these hard decisions you have to make in the game when you get these action tiles and how you're going to use them. Uh, one of them you're going to use for yourself, one you're going to pass, and you're going to make these hard decisions like, oh my God, if I give that that one away, they're going to be able to use it, but I, but I need this one. So it's going to be these, these really tough decisions as you, as you create your colonia and you, and you help out the, um, the new monument to, uh, to Emperor Trajan himself. So that's Forum Trajanum with our new partners, Hook, out in Germany. Also on that awesome. same street date, uh, we have an expansion to Fields of Green, which is our card drafting game we came out with um, uh, about a year ago. Uh, and this is called Fields of Green Grand Fair. If you like card drafting with a really American theme, it's about, you know, Fields of Green is about creating these wonderful fields in front of you um, of, of farming fields and, and, and your animals. And you're creating this thing in front of you. You'll now be able to also exhibit your, your wares at the Grand Fair. And that's the first expansion to Fields of Green, Fields of Green Grand Fair. I'll mention two more items if it's okay. Guns shown clever. What? Oh. I, I may have uh, heard Guns of that. Shown Clever, which was <laughs> a Kenner Spiel de Jar nominated game uh, last year uh, by by a true uh, an amazing designer that's come out of nowhere. Nowhere. Um, Wolfgang Vorscht, and he had three games that were nominated for Spiel de Jar or Kenner Spiel de Jar. The guy is a, a genius. So we reached out to Schmidt Spieler, which is one of the largest uh, publishers out in Germany. No one kind of knows that name as much. I mean, their um, Ravensburger is sort of like the Hasbro of Germany, but they do All like right. hobby games too. And Schmidtspieler is right behind them in like in like total sales volume, multi million dollar, very large company out there. They created and they came out with Gun Sean Clever. We got the license for this, and we'll be doing this. This game has just done amazingly well. People are just like keep importing it from Germany. So I hope they're I hope we can sell our copies, but it's a it's a <laughs> phenomenal roll and write game where you you know everyone's obviously every, everyone's actioning at the same time. I'm selecting a die and I'm writing on my piece of paper, but everybody can action the dice that are available at the same time. It's an amazing, amazing clever mechanic. And also there is a an app for it, so people have been playing it and competing online. Gun Shun Clever, and that's the first week in second week in February. And the final thing I'll mention is Futuropia by Ooh. Freedom and Freeze. That and that's good. our partnership with 2F Spieler. In Futuropia, you are, you know, it's a goal in the future uh, that we don't work a lot and we take time to do the things we want. So in this future utopian society, that's what Futuropia comes from, you want to try to put robots to work to do all the work for you while you do Sounds your good. leisure activities. Yeah. So it's a heavy economic game of making sure that your engine works via putting out uh, robots to work and building wonderful places for you to live and things like that. So that's Futuropia, heavy economic game by Freedom and Freeze. And that's also on February 6th, the, uh, the, first, the first week in, in February. 
So that's all. I won't pimp too much. We'll stop right there. How's that? Well, I think all the other games are set to self-pimp mode. So, you know, <laughs> that engine's just going to run. So I think we're good go. on that there front. Go. So I think this has been a lot of fun. Have you enjoyed yourself? You, you, you're on your third beer. That's the goal. They're going to see if, you know. I know. That was the goal. That's we did the it. goal. We did it. So, so no, no, this is great, Chris. I, I Chris, I, this is really fantastic. I'm enjoying myself very much. Um, when I saw the first episode, I, I saw the episode with um, Eric Summer, and I, and I said to myself, "Well, these guys are very professional, and I really enjoy the way they're doing this." So, professional and silly—that's a hard thing to do. So, you do a good job. Well, you know, the silly comes naturally. The professional, I have to work at. What can I say? Yeah, we're maintaining that facade so far. So, you know, there kudos you to us for like keeping it. up the illusion. <laughs> Absolutely. Like so what we're going to do is normally in past episodes, we've gone and played a game. But, you know, Stephen's going to come back next week and play a game. So we're, we're actually going to bid him goodbye tonight. Wait so a wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. My agent booked me for one week only. One I, week. I'm not coming back. Who I'm said sorry. I'm coming back? I mean, you got to talk to her. I wait, mean, you, did you? Did you I'm really? Sorry. Oh, you know what? I'll ship you a beer. Contract. I'll ship you some beer. How's that? Don't tell anybody. Eddie, Eddie Topper? Um, well, I got some second fiddle. Maybe I'll, oh, I'll take it. I'll take it. All right. I'll all right. take it. I'll take it. All right. Fair enough. Oh, good. But, but you're going to have to tune in next week to see what we play. But thank you so much, Stephen, for being on. Where can people find you if they want to find you on the Internet? Well, thank you very much, guys, for having me on. I really do appreciate it. You can find Stronghold Games. The website, of course, is strongholdgames.com. We are very interactive uh, in social media, so it's at Stronghold Games on Twitter, slash Stronghold Games on Facebook. As I mentioned, if you want to listen to it, a uh, another podcast, which is not quite as good as this amazing video podcast <laughs> here, but if you want to listen to another one, BoardGamesInsider.com, and you can get that on all of the various uh, uh, places you can find your podcasts. Thank you guys so much for having me. I appreciate it. Awesome. Well, thanks, Stephen. I'm so glad we finally got to hook up. Life has slowed down. He's living in Florida. So next time you game all night, be sure you do it outside because it's nice. Thanks for watching this week's episode. Join us next week when we play a game with the guest. If you enjoy our content, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Be sure to follow us on all forms of social media. Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook are the best ways possible. Simply find us by searching for Game All Night Show. And of course, check out our website at GameAllNightShow.com. This Week and Each Week is made possible through the generous support of donors like these. Be sure to subscribe below and check out our latest videos. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what this this is, right? I have no idea what's happening here. May I? May I have a quick bio break? I forgot to use the mendrum before we started. You can use that as an outtake. Outtake. <laughs>